Having acclimatised at base camp, we are now ready for our first rotation, which will take us up and beyond Camp 1, climbing our way through the famed Kumbu Icefall. A river of falling ice, it is formed as the glacier descends a steep section and turns into a jumble of deep crevasses and blocks of ice which can range anywhere from the size of a car to a house. It is estimated that the glacier advances three to four feet down the mountain every day. The safest route is established and maintained by tenured climbing Sherpa called Icefall Doctors who fix the lines and bridge the crevasses. We leave well before sunrise, when the glacier has frozen during the night and is less able to move. As the intense sunlight warms the area, friction between the ice structures lessens and the chance of crevasses opening and blocks falling increases as the day wears on. Been up since about 3, it's about 6 a.m. now. We're just getting into the, the heart of it. We're walking on a jumbled glacier with huge blocks of ice towering above us. Pretty intimidating. We've heard the glacier moving several times already this morning. Gaining some altitude. You can tell I'm breathing hard. It is here where you finally feel that the trekking has ended and your ascent of Everest has truly begun. This is what life in the Kumbu Icefall is like. It may seem glamorous. It may seem like an extreme sport. But the reality is, whew, it's just moving very slow. One foot in front of the other. <laughs> moving through blocks of ice that way tons upon tons. Because of the dynamic nature of the glacier, you need to move continuously, which can be very strenuous on your first rotation as you're still acclimatizing. You can see all the new debris from this loose ice slope right here. We're moving quickly through this section. Probably the most dangerous section we've seen so far. All this debris is just within the first, the last couple days, so. Gives you some idea how dynamic uh, this Kumbu Icefall is. Climbing through the icefall is actually one of the trickiest parts of the ascent, and some climbers are surprised by it. There are nuances in the technical skill required, the timing, crowding, and danger mitigation. There's a lot of up and down, jumaring, vertical ice walls, delicate ladder crossings, and tenuous climbing. It is not only physical, but requires high levels of focus. You can see the, the prayers written on my helmet for safe pass, passage through the icefall up to the summit. Really the real danger here in the icefall is not what's immediately above you, it's what's way above you. These are some of the towering ice blocks and then on these peaks way up above us that's what came down in 2014. That hanging ice, a mile, vertical mile above us. While there is significant objective danger in the icefall, years of experience help to navigate these obstacles more smoothly. Climbing the icefall can take anywhere between three and six hours. Cresting the last vertical wall and emerging into the Western Coombe is a great achievement. Well done. Camp one ahead of us. All right, come on in. Nice work. It was about a six hour effort at sea level or even, you know, 14,000 feet, 4,000 meters. That would take you no time at all. Maybe an hour or two back home in Seattle. I climbed Mount Sai 3,000 vertical feet in exactly an hour. We did less than that today and it took us six hours to give you an idea how limiting altitude is. We're gonna take a, a good rest tonight, take a walk up towards camp two tomorrow, 
Then the following day, we're going to move up there and give ourselves a chance to acclimatize here.